Hello everyone, Brian here, coming to you in our March epistle um, from the Diocese of Idaho, our online newsletter. I'm down here on one of the side courtyards of St. Michael's Cathedral in downtown Boise. I was inspired to come down because I was looking at the readings for this coming Sunday, the third Sunday of Lent, that season where we spend intentional time reflecting on what separates us from God and how we often have sinful moments, even in the midst of our attempting to be good disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Since that first reading for this Sunday is God's giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses, I was reminded of this monument, this copy of the Ten Commandments. It arrived here on the grounds of the cathedral in 2006 um, at the invitation of the very Reverend um, Richard Demarest, the Dean of the Cathedral at that time, because the city was in a potential legal battle with, um, with a uh, very destructive group of people, <laughs> they thought, we thought, um, who wanted to place a, an anti-LGBT statue or monument in the city park where that um, Ten Commandments monument was. So rather than fighting that or allowing that, the city sought a solution to remove the Ten Commandment uh, monument, and um, Dean Demarest had the perfect solution. Came here in 2006, and it um, sits right there on the corner, facing the Idaho State House. It's a great story of community relationships ending up doing the right thing. But it also reminded me of this piece of scripture that is so familiar to us, um, almost too familiar, yes? Um, often in church when we hear a familiar reading come by, um, maybe we wait for the next reading or maybe in the case of the Ten Commandments, um, you try to see if you can remember them in order <laughs> before the lay reader reads them. But I wanted to reflect on them with you. They're in our prayer book, you know. Um, um, on pages um, 317 and 350 as part of the uh, Decalogue, um, part of the service that before either Eucharist Rite 1 or Eucharist Rite 2. May I remind you of them for the moment? Uh, you shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. And you shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. The Ten Commandments appears a third time in our prayer book back on page 847 as part of the Catechism, the teaching document of our prayer book and church. I'm not going to read you the version that the Catechism has. It is, is a good interpretation. It expounds on um, the short statements of the Ten Commandments as we receive them, broadening their obligation, broadening their um, appeal. But I'd like you to go look for yourself. Acknowledging that, for some of us in our experience of scripture, we wish a certain passage said more sometimes. Maybe got more specific um, or addressed a particular issue that we wish it would address. However, as time has gone by in my life around scripture, I'm pretty much determined that um, Scripture says more than I'm willing to let it say. So I bid you into some reflection, some reading, some evaluation of that portion of Exodus. You can find it on your leaflets, perhaps on Sunday if you're having church. But you could go to page 350, read them straight then go to page 847 in the prayer book and read the Catechism's interpretation.
this season of Lent, we're meant to look at our lives. It seems should be not so much about wishing otherwise, lamenting where we've fallen short, but perhaps more likely exploring where we could go, what new thing we could take on, what change of behavior, most likely towards an individual and that we have in mind, or a group of folks, or a family. The Ten Commandments and Scripture call us to more than we think. So I invite you to take a look. I highly recommend them, these Ten Commandments. I hope you're enjoying a day like it is this kind of day in Boise. I hope you're staying safe, I hope you're staying warm. I hope you're wearing your masks. Take a look, page 847 in the Book of Common Prayer. If you don't have one at home, you can go to church early and look it up. Give yourself a chance for Holy Scripture to say more to you than you normally expect. See you next time. Bye-bye.